if you're overlanding in a region that has a pub or a brewery in it, you probably want to stop there and suck a couple of flights down because it's going to add to your trip. So that's a necessity in our books. It makes your trips fun. You're on vacation. Look forward to it. Have a good time. All right, that's it for today's video. <laughs> Alrighty, how's it going everyone? It's James from FTR Outdoors. We got Devin manning the camera. Uh, today we are coming at you with a, another segment into the Overland series. We have been uh, away for a while as it seems from the video making, but as you saw in our last upload, we did a little bit of work for uh, a company called Brave Star Salvage. So that kind of took up some of our time. We're still out and about doing stuff, but we just didn't hit stuff for the channel until now. So today's video, we are going to be going over our overland necessities or the absolute necessary items that we take on every single trip, whether it's a weekend trip, a three, four day trip, or in this case, an eight day trip. So we've been talking for a while about how we go for extended trips quite often. Two days from now, we're packing up and we are leaving on an eight day trip. And this was a perfect opportunity for us to show you the essential gear that we bring on every single trip. I'm going to be showing you a few specific items. I'm not gonna show you every single piece. I'm just gonna break down each item in like a separate subcategory. And you guys can kind of take inspiration or take, uh, I guess, this information as you may please and use it to build your own kit. So. We'll start off with the first category and I'm gonna kind of order these in order of importance uh, in my opinion. So not everybody's gonna have the same opinion, but this is what I think is most important first off. So number one, uh, first category we're gonna go over today and uh, what I think is the most necessary piece or pieces of equipment that you should have in your kit is going to be a safety category. So in terms of safety, things that we always have in the truck or that we always bring on every single trip that we go on, these are gonna be some of those items. So the one specifically I'll show you guys um, that we've just added to our kit. We've had it in mind for the last two, three seasons. We just haven't got around to buying it. Is the Garmin InReach Mini. There's a bunch of different Garmin uh, products out there. There's bigger in reaches. We got the mini what it is. It's a satellite communicator It's an SOS device the reason why we bring this and why you should think about having something like this in your own kit is We go out for extended periods of time where there's no cell service and oftentimes no people So we think it's super smart and super important to have something where you can communicate with people at home in case of an emergency or just to update loved ones uh, as to where you are, your location, etc. So with the InReach Mini, what we tend to do is just shoot off a waypoint location and a text letting our family know, or whoever know, that we've made it safely to our campsite. We uh, won't go too far in depth into the actual workings of the InReach. If you guys want to see something like that, uh, let us know in the comments and we can talk more about the InReach Mini in detail uh, in a different video, but satellite communicator SOS. At the end of the day, for safety purposes, it's good to have something that you can click SOS in case you get injured, stranded, um, just put in a bad situation where you don't have any other option. So we always have this in the kit. Other things that we carry in our safety kit, uh, you'll see here, bear spray, some sort of bear deterrent I think is absolutely necessary depending on where you live. So for us, we live in the Rocky Mountain area. As you've seen in our videos, we tour the backcountry, we fish in the backcountry, we overland in the backcountry, and it is always bear country. So uh, last week we saw the first two bears that we've seen this season. They were just black bears, but they still can be a nuisance and they can be a danger to you and your crew. So we keep bear spray as well as bear bangers in the truck. Um, super cheap piece of kit. It's always good to have around because you never know when you might need it. Um, I've also got buddies who have rifles, shotguns, etc. cetera. Um, that can also be a valuable piece of kit. But for now, this is what we rock and then the bear bangers. Typically, uh, you know, you're not gonna find yourself having to use this stuff 
but the time that you don't have it might be the time that you need it, and then you're out of luck. Other things, and I think uh, one of the most important things in this whole safety kit, um, I won't show you specifically, but it's first aid supplies. So in the console of my truck, I always keep first aid supplies. Um, there's plenty of options out there, plenty of different kits. Beer break. Beer break. Um, so in terms of first aid kits, there are plenty of options out there. I don't have any links specifically for you know different kits, but what I have seen is that if you buy a cheap run-of-the-mill kit from let's say Mountain Equipment Co-op, Canadian Tire, um, REI, stuff like that, sometimes you tend to get a lot of stuff that you don't really need. So really do your research and maybe build your own kit like we have. Um, things that I always keep in the truck, for example, are something like a cat tourniquet. You're out in the backcountry, we do a lot of fly fishing and hiking. Um, if you fall and puncture an artery... Um, Band-Aids and polysporin, dude. Yeah, Band-Aids and polysporin, right? Like, you, you open up your first aid kit that you might buy from the store, turns out gauze ain't gonna do anything for an arterial bleed. Um, we also keep epinephrine, so EpiPens, um, for people who are allergic to, let's say, bees, wasps, peanuts, stuff like that. Um, if you go into anaphylaxis out in the middle of nowhere, you're SOL. So those are two like often overlooked things. And then yeah, we keep the standard like blister care, basic wound care supplies, dressings, bandages. We also keep aspirin on board as well as some wound packing stuff. Um, another thing in regards to first aid that a lot of people definitely overlook, even if you have first aid supplies in your kit or your overland rig, whatever it might be, um, know how to use them. So you can go buy a cat tourniquet online if you really want. It's a good thing to have, we always have one, but if you don't know how to use a cat tourniquet, it's basically gonna be useless to you, so make sure you go through everything and learn how to use it, practice with it. You can take it out of its packaging and put it back away. It's not something that typically has to be sterile. Uh, take it from a guy who's used them before. Um, in a time where you need to use a tourniquet, you don't have time to think about how to use a tourniquet. So, Learn how to use that stuff. Learn how to use an EpiPen. Learn how to do basic dressings and uh, you're set. So those are kind of the three items that I always have in my safety kit. There's other things out there that we do have. Um, backcountry maps are a good thing. And just communicate with your friends and family. Let them know where you're going just in case you know something happens and you don't come home. So that's the first category. It's the most important on my list, and I find it's probably the most overlooked category because most people think, eh, it's never gonna happen to me. Luckily, it's never happened to us, but you never know. Category number two, another often overlooked category, especially in overlanding, and something that I overlooked for a while because it's not that glamorous or fun, uh, is gonna be recovery gear. So recovery gear, um, I didn't actually start collecting until you know a year into building my truck or eight months into building my truck and I definitely found that it was something I should have invested in sooner because um, it, we go out alone all of the time or if we go out with one other person there's been a bunch of times where we haven't had recovery gear and looking back a lot of things could have gone wrong we could have uh, you know hit a flat tire gotten stuck and not had a shovel or traction boards or anything like that and again been screwed another good reason to carry an inreach um, or a satellite communicator if you find yourself without recovery gear or your recovery gear isn't adequate to get you out you can call for help um, you don't have to push sos for that just message a buddy <laughs> um, so an example that i have here um, it's nice shiny new this is a hitch mounted shackle it's a big i believe 10,000 pound shackle um, you just put these bad boys in your hitch. It's always good to have. I always keep it in my truck. I used to borrow friends um, in case I needed a tow. So for a guy like me and my rig, I don't have a aftermarket steel bumper installed on my truck. Therefore, I don't have factory rear recovery points. Um, so this is awesome and absolutely necessary because if you are stuck and somebody behind you has to pull you out, uh, you can throw this in your hitch and they can attach a winch, a toe strap, um, a sling strap, whatever it might be they have to pull you out. 
Along with that, I always keep a toe strap in the truck. You guys should also always keep some sort of strap, whether or not, yeah, like I said, it's a toe strap or a sling strap. Um, I don't have a winch on my truck. I think that's kind of a last resort. And a lot of the overland trails that I think most people hit don't require the use of a winch, but it's something you can do. Another thing I always keep in my truck is tucked away on the side, if you, as you guys, if you've been watching, have seen in previous videos, is a, is a big spade. So I keep a full-size spade. It's super, super handy. I've used it a bunch of times. Uh, even when I'm not using it to dig my truck out, I use it to dig holes when I'm taking in the woods. So, <laughs> and the other thing that you've seen in the Tacoma build videos and all that kind of stuff uh, is the traction boards I have mounted on the roof. I have used those um, in the last six months three times uh, or four times, I don't remember, um, all in the winter. So we do a lot of off-road driving in the winter time. They work wonders, fantastic. Uh, I wouldn't be caught without them in the winter time, especially or on any trip. So they're up there, they sit there, they work great. They're great tools to have. And the last thing in regards to recovery, which isn't really a stuck or an off-road specific situation of recovery, I have a battery booster always tucked away in my truck. It's a NOCO portable battery booster. Um, yeah, it's small, it's compact. Again, make sure you know how to use it, make sure it's charged up, but you just kind of put the positive and negative leads onto your battery in the ground. and you boost your vehicle and you're good to go in case you ever leave the headlights on or find yourself in a situation where your battery dies. Take that information as you will. Those are all things that we carry every single trip and absolutely I recommend. They just live in the truck. I kind of forget about them. I check on it time to time and make sure that let's say the NOCO is all charged up. Um, make sure that uh, you know the shovel hasn't been left at a campsite or something like that by accident. Oh, and the last thing that I have, sorry, I've also got an air compressor in here as well as a tire repair kit. Super important, those are new additions to the kit. Um, yeah, I would say that was the last thing that I really wanted as an absolute necessity for my recovery kit. Um, we drive in a lot of rocky riverbeds, um, do a lot of solo trips. If I get into a situation where I blow a tire and let's say my spare has also been blown or my spare has uh, struts cracking or dry rot uh, on the actual tire from being old, which is getting to that point, um, the repair kit and the compressor are absolutely necessary. It's also fun to air down and air up. So that's it for the recovery section of the video. We're gonna go on to the next section and that's going to be where this guy fits in here. Um, so the next category where I think that uh, you should absolutely have or you do actually need 100% is going to be some place to sleep. So you need shelter. Um, the reason why I have the tent out here is, uh, so what this is, is it's just a little three man backpacking tent. If you guys are outdoorsmen, chances are you have some sort of outdoor tent. Outdoors people. Yeah, outdoors people, sorry. Um, you probably have some sort of tent. If you've ever camped before, you might have a backpacking tent, you might have a Coleman or a Woods brand tent, an REI tent. This one just happens to be a Nemo. We've got other tents as well. Um, but shelter is an absolute necessity. So in a lot of overlanding videos, it makes it seem like maybe you need a rooftop tent for overlanding. Um, that's not the case. Use what you got. Uh, at the end of the day, a Coleman tent from Canadian Tire. For all you Canadian viewers, you know Canadian Tire. Or Woods Brown tent for you American viewers down there. It's a shame you don't have Canadian Tire, it's fantastic. Walmart, I think, has Ozark Trail tents. Um, those are gonna do you just fine. You don't have to spend $4,000 on a rooftop tent to get out overlanding. You're right, you can get one for 400 on Alibaba. <laughs> it's true. Um, but yeah, use what you got, right? So if you're an outdoorsman and you want to get out camping, um, the tent that you have kicking around in your garage is probably gonna work. Uh, recently we went out with my buddy Ryland. He had a probably five to eight year old, eight person Costco brand tent. I think it was just a Coleman tent and it works great. So you don't need that. Um, but yeah, absolutely necessary to have a shelter of some sort. Uh, as you've seen in previous videos, we sleep in the back of the Tacoma a lot. It's really nice and really quick. It's a 
pretty easy thing to do and build. It's relatively inexpensive. If you have a hard topper for utility purposes, you can easily sleep in the back of your truck. That's part of the reason why I bought mine. For this eight day trip that we're about to head on, we're actually not gonna be sleeping in the truck. We're gonna set up a, a bigger four man tent that I have. It's a little bit more comfortable in my opinion. You can set up a base camp uh, and leave your stuff in the tent, your sleeping gear, clothes, bags, etc. And you can hop in the truck and drive around every day and not have to worry about uh, packing up your gear every day or folding up, in my case, my mattress and rolling up my bedroll. Now that's pretty minor. Another thing to consider for a guy looking to buy a rooftop tent as a shelter, if you wanna go fishing like we're doing on this trip, every single day you gotta hop in that truck and go drive to your fishing spot, you're gonna have to fold it up and then reset it up. Something to keep in mind, for you hardcore guys out there or people who just don't want any gear, or don't have a tent, sleep in a, under tarp, build a lean-to, go have fun, right? But you need some sort of shelter to go out and overland. You can't just go sleep in the grass, especially if it's gonna be cold. Um, if it's raining, that's a really good way of getting hypothermia, getting sick, your bedding's gonna be messed. So yeah, invest in some sort of shelter. So that's a quick category, but absolutely necessary. We're getting more into like the, the gear, the camping gear side of things. Uh, this stuff's all fun and you know, you look forward to going out and buying because it's super cool. So the next category we're gonna get into is water. So as seen in our last uh, Tacoma video, we did a quick walkthrough and review or first impression of this MSR Guardian gravity purifier filter. Um, since then we've had the opportunity to use it uh, to filter roughly 50 or 60 liters of water. It is absolutely fantastic. For an eight day trip like we're going on here, uh, myself personally, I am bringing my 20 liter Scepter water jug that's tucked away in my drawer, as well as a 10 liter up on the roof. Um, but that 10 liter on the roof I typically use to put out fires. Uh, it's just something good to have if you guys are going to go have fires in the backcountry. Keep water so that you can put out a fire. So 10 liters, that's what that's for. Eight days, 20 liters, it's not going to last you. Uh, the other companions we're going with um, probably bring about 40 liters of water. Even that being said, 60 liters of water for four or five people is not going to last you eight days. That's where this comes in handy. So absolutely, I would recommend having some sort of water purifier or water filter system. Unless you wanna carry yourself personally um, 40 to 80 liters of water for a week long trip, uh, or go back into a town to restock on water or carry bottled water, uh, I'd recommend this. Not only is it better for the environment, in the long run it's gonna be better on the wallet and you're gonna save space in your vehicle. You need water to survive. It's hot in the summertime. We're going through a heat wave here. We're drinking, you know, three, four, five liters of water a piece. And then we've got coffee, washing dishes, cooking food. You can easily go through 20 liters of water a day between two people. Uh, Gavin and I would do that on a normal day. Uh, so yeah, absolutely vital to have. Doesn't have to be the MSR Guardian Gravity Purifier, but that is what we use. We absolutely recommend it. It's super versatile. It's never gonna fail you, and you're gonna be able to drink water from anything. You could piss in a puddle and probably filter it and drink it. <laughs> so um, you probably filter your own through that. Yeah, thing. you probably could <laughs> if you mashed it up real good in the bucket. <laughs> uh, beer doesn't count as water. Um, so. Next category kind of goes along with uh, water, food. Um, specifically, a means of cooking food. So you need some sort of system to cook food. I'm not gonna go into coolers in this video or like food cooling systems because you could go for a month and just use dehydrated dry foods and not have to have a cooler and you'd be absolutely fine. Canned foods, stuff like that. So a cooler isn't really necessary. We do bring one on every trip. You can have a fridge and stuff like that, but we're not gonna include it in the video because you don't really need it. But all food requires cooking. Unless you're raw vegan. Um, so this is our stove that we're currently using. It's the uh, Jetbo Genesis Base Camp System. Uh, as you can see, for a camp stove, in here we've got a pot, a stove, 
a windshield, uh, a pan, two plates and a pot lid with a strainer. It's super compact. This lives in the truck on every single trip that we go on. And I find as I do more trips and as I've had this longer, I appreciate it more and I use it more. It is a super awesome system. I use it every single day camping and it works for me. Uh, along with that, I always keep one pound propane canisters. Uh, you can't cook without propane in one of these stoves, so make sure you got space or you bring enough propane to last your trip. As you've seen in our videos, we like to do a lot of bush cooking. Uh, bush cooking is always done on the fire. <laughs> Often though, we have fire bands, so we have to um, improvise and use a propane stove. So this trip, it's up in the air whether or not we're going to be allowed to have fires and cook on fire. Right now there's a restriction in place. Um, if you saw outside where we're at, uh, this, the, the sky has been smoky, you can't really see the sun, it looks like it's a winter day, but it's summer, hot, humid, muggy, and super smoky because of wildfires. So for us, unfortunately, we can't cook on the fire year round because typically every year we have fire pans and that's just the way it is. So fire is another means of cooking, but I think it's more necessary to have when overlanding some sort of propane stove because you're not always going to have access to wood you're not going to always have access to uh, campgrounds where it's legal to have fires and there might be fire bans due to wildfires in your area it's becoming more common um, as you can see in the news for anybody who lives in canada in canada or the west coast of north america you know what i'm talking about <laughs> so yeah that's the the next category the cooking category um, or some sort of cooking equipment you don't really need much more than a stove. There's other things that I always keep in the truck, like plates, cutlery, utensils, that kind of stuff. Um, you don't need that. In the bush cooks, you see us, you know, stirring with a stick. You know, bush stick. It works. Uh, you don't need anything fancy in terms of that. Uh, what was the next thing I was gonna go over there? Um, so, the sixth category, uh, and the next category that I'm gonna be going over, this will be our last major category for necessities when overlanding. Um, and that's gonna be clothing. So back here I have this Patagonia duffel bag. We won't go into it, but this duffel bag lives in the truck. Um, I bought that for the sole purpose of having that in my truck at all times so that I don't forget something that I might need. Um, so clothing wise, what I have in there is I keep- Brave Star things. Salvage. Yeah, Brave Star Salvage. I've always got you know some nice salvage cold mills denim kicking around, heavy duty USA made tees, nice uh, American made hats, stuff like that. Uh, FTR apparel, that's a new one that's gonna be in there. Um, you know, Devin's working on that stuff right now, but other necessities, um, that are gonna keep you alive, I keep base layers. Um, so thermals, uh, if it gets really cold or if you get stuck in the winter time, it's good to have thermals. We camp in the winter as you've seen in our other videos. So I keep my base layers, top, bottom, and socks in there just to err on the side of caution. You never know when you might need them. Hypothermia is a real thing. If you can keep that core body temperature in, you know, that's a win. And even in the summer in the Rocky Mountains, guys, this week, uh, I've looked at the forecast, we've got lows of five degrees Celsius up where we're headed. Um, that's the end of July. So five degrees Celsius, you're looking at like 40 Fahrenheit in that range. That's pretty cold. You fall in a river at night from drinking too many beers, um, you know, it might not be that warm, especially in a fire bath. Throw some thermals on, get a towel. Another thing that I have in that bag is a towel. I have a raincoat in there. I've got a toque in there. I've got heavy duty gloves in there. I've got rain pants. I've got extra swim trunks and then extra pants and a couple extra sun shirts for fishing. Um, they live in there. You never know when you might need them. Every trip I tend to open that bag up since I bought it. I pull out my UV protected shirt uh, to go fishing on the river because it's been super crazy hot here on the west coast or the, the western portion of uh, North America. And uh, yeah, it's been absolutely awesome. I don't like getting sunburnt. I've got this tattoo on my arm that likes to superheat in you know minor temperatures. So when it's 35, 40 degrees Celsius, it's good to have UV protected clothing. Um, so that's it for that <coughs> uh, category. Uh, 
that's another one that I think is overlooked. A lot of people just kind of pack before the trip. I think it's super smart to have something that you've packed, let's say weeks in advance or the beginning of every season that you know is always in the truck in case you forget something. Um, it's there, it's a nice safety net. You never know, right? Even if you just have a rain poncho in there or like an emergency blanket, it's gonna work in a pinch, it's gonna keep you dry and it's gonna keep you having fun on your trip versus being soaking wet and cold. And hungry. So, <laughs> I'm tired and <laughs> cold and hungry. Um, we've got one more category that is uh, an FTR essential um, and it probably is an essential for a lot of our viewers and that's uh, beer. Or, or whiskey or your poison of choice unless um, you're raw vegan unless you're raw vegan then uh, you know there might be some animal product I mean this one's called babe um, <laughs> it's, got a, it's got a pig on it <laughs> it's got a little piggy on there I mean it's probably in support of the piggies you know uh, it's partnered with Jasper Brewing but yeah um, <laughs> uh, Beer, your poison of choice. It's nothing beats uh, winding down at the end of a day and uh, enjoying a cold beer or a nice whiskey or a scotch or bourbon, whatever it is you want to drink. White Claw, um, you know, water. <laughs> but uh, yeah, FTR Essential. Maybe we'll start brewing our own FTR beer one day uh, because we like drinking beer. Um, that's pretty much it. There's a ton of other gear that I keep in the Tacoma. There's a ton of other gear that I bring along but this is just necessary equipment that I think everyone needs to have on every single trip. If I have missed anything that you guys at home can think of, let me know, or if you can maybe contribute to my setup and the equipment that I might need, please comment, let us know. If you have any questions about any of the gear that we have specifically, um, like the Garmin, the water filter, what kind of air compressor we use. Oh, what kind of duffel is that? That's super sweet, man. Oh, where'd you get those Brave Star pants, man? Like, what's the website link? You know, go check it out. Shoot us a message um, and we're happy to respond. We try to respond to all the messages on the YouTube channel. If we haven't responded to yours, we apologize. Um, but that's pretty much it. So we're gonna be loading up the truck tonight and tomorrow and we're gonna be hitting the trails in the next 48 hours. You will be seeing this video more than likely while we're on the road and we'll have another one for you while we're out on the trip. Um, when we get back, stay tuned for some awesome stuff. It's going to be a good one. This is kind of a reunion to the start of the channel. So until next time, guys, <laughs> to the start of the channel. Uh, so until next time, guys, enjoy yourselves, get outdoors, have a cold brew on us. Cheers.